Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to create RAID 60 based on one of the, con of the two controllers – IBM Server RAID M5016 or LSI 9265-8E. How to build a RAID system with the help of the controller BIOS, uh, with the LSA utility or with the store CLI tool. Also, you will see how to recover data from a crashed RAID 60. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. RAID 60, also known as RAID 6 plus 0, is a disk array that unites several groups of disks and combines the double parity of RAID 6 with the strapping of RAID 0. You need at least 8 disks to build this RAID time. As to its reliability, it's quite good, because this RAID time provides double redundancy and can survive losing up to 2 disks in each group. However, you can't absolutely exclude loss of data. For starters, let's see how you can build a RAID 60 system. I'll show you how to create an array with several drives and the controller IBM M5016. For the first method, I'll be using a utility called LSA. The name actually stands for LSI Storage Authority Software, a web application that allows you to monitor and fix problems with disk storage systems as well as create and manage various RAID configurations based on LSI Vega controllers. First of all, you need to download it. To get the latest version of the program, visit the official website, type LSI Storage Authority in the search field and click to find it. Open the Downloads tab and get the version for the operating system you are using. I choose a version for Windows because I'm going to show everything with the example of this operating system. Click the Download icon next to the zipper archive. Extract the files to any convenient directory and start the installation. You don't have to fill in the customer information. Now you are suggested to select the setup type and you have several options to choose from. Select Gateway to have all program features installed. When the installation is complete, the program's shortcut will appear on your desktop. When you start the program, it will open in the browser. Click Sign in here and give the login and password to your Windows account. Type the login in Latin letters to avoid any issues. After sign in, you will see the controller management screen. In this field, select the controller. To create a new array, open the configure option. If you already have a previously built RAID, delete it by clearing the configuration. Just click on the clear configuration button, check the confirmation box and click yes. And then click Configure again and select the configuration method Advanced, where you can specify all additional settings or Simple, where some things will be set to default. In the next step, specify the RAID level then add the drives it is going to consist of and add a virtual drive. Specify the capacity 
in name and strip size. And then select the initialization method, read and write policy, cache policy, and other settings. Then click the button Add Virtual Drive. And finish to complete the process. After some time, the RAID will appear in this window. This is where you can see its information, disk status, and so on. When you click More Actions, you'll be able to schedule a consistency check, configure notifications, add hot swap disks, and do many other things. Another way to create a disk array on this type of controller is by using the console-based utility Store CLI. Store CLI is a command prompt tool that lets you change any settings for LSI Avago RAID controllers. That is, you can use it for the same things as the LSA utility – create, modify, and manage RAID systems. This program can be downloaded from the official website. Just type the name in the search field and download the version you need. Extract the files from their archive. To start the program, open the command prompt as administrator and go to the folder containing the program. Do it by typing cd and copying the path to the directory that contains the necessary version of this utility. Run the help command to check how the program works. Now we need to make sure that the program can recognize the controller. To display the control information, type the following command. Let's view the list of disks connected to this controller. All you need is one command. And you will see their status. To make sure they aren't united into a RAID system, try one more command. It displays the information about virtual disks. If you add the element all at the end of the command, you will see more detailed information, such as the composition of the virtual drive, cache settings, strip size, etc. To remove a virtual disk, use this command where v60 is the name of the virtual disk. To make sure that the RAID system has been removed, run the command to display virtual disks one more time. Now that the array which we don't need is removed, let's start building a RAID 60 system. All you need is one command again. Where vd is the virtual disk, r says the array type, Size sets the space to be used, and I selected all free space. Name is used to assign a name to this array. Drives indicates the drives to be used in building the RAID system, and in my case it is from 0 to 7, a total of 8 drives. PD per array determines the number of physical disks per one array. In my case, with RAID 60, I set two groups of four disks each. This information is enough to create the array. You can add some advanced settings if necessary. Enable write caching for the disks, PD cache, and specify on or off. WT read and write policy, NRA, 
strip size and so on. Otherwise, these advanced settings will have default options. Now, check the information on the virtual drive. As you can see, the array has been created successfully, and you can use the previously described utility to manage it. One more way to build the RAID system on an LSI controller involves using the controller's web BIOS. To access it, press the corresponding key shortcut while the computer is booting. In my case, this is Ctrl H. If this operation doesn't boot web BIOS, but the operating system is booting instead, then try again, but before that, disable the boot disk in the BIOS of your motherboard. Open BIOS, find the list of connected drives and select Disable here. After that, this problem should disappear. And when you boot next time and press the Ctrl H shortcut, the controls web BIOS should boot. The first screen will show you the list of detected controllers, if you have more than one. Select the controller you want to use and click Start. In the next window, you'll see all drives connected to the controller. To build the RAID system, open the line Configuration Wizard. If you already had an array made of these drives, the system will warn you that it is going to be lost. Click Yes to confirm. Now choose Manual Configuration. and click Next. At the next stage, select the drives for the feature array and click Add to Array. If you select all drives and add them into a group, you'll be able to create RAID 5, 6, 1 or 0. In order to have RAID 10, 50 or 60, you have to create several groups of drives, as such array types are based on using groups of drives rather than individual drives. In my case, the plan is to create a RAID 60 system consisting of 8 drives, so I select the first 4 drives and then click Add to Array. and accept DG, where DG stands for Drive Group. After that, I select the remaining four drives, click Add to Array, and accept DG. then click Next. In the next window, click Add to Span, add the drive groups we have just created, and click Next to continue. Now you can see what RAID levels are available – 60, 50, 10 and 00. So select the necessary one from this list. If necessary, you can modify other settings such as strip size, read and write policy and so on. In the end, set the size of the feature array, I select all available capacity. Then click Accept to confirm your decision and then Yes. Click Next, then Accept again and then Yes to save the configuration. The program will warn you that all data will be lost and ask you to confirm the start of initialization. 
click Yes to agree. Go back to the main menu and restart the computer. If you want to boot from this device, don't forget to check the box next to Set Boot Drive. If the whole system is supposed to boot from another disk which was disabled before starting the controller's web BIOS, open the BIOS of your motherboard and enable that disk again. After the operating system boots, you should format the array in the disk management, so that it will appear in Windows Explorer. Create a new volume and wait until the format operation is complete. Now it is displayed in the Explorer window properly. If you accidentally deleted information from your RAID array, lost data because of a wrong configuration, or if your controller, hard disk or any other equipment broke down, and now you cannot copy your information, then use a specialized tool to recover data from RAID systems. Hetman RAID Recovery will help you bring back the lost data from the damaged disk array. From the storage system, it reads all the information about the controller, the motherboard or the software used to create a disk array and then rebuilds the damaged RAID to let you copy the remaining data. If you accidentally removed any data from a RAID system, just run this program. Scan the drive. and then recover the files you need. Removed elements are marked with a red cross. If your problem is caused by a controller failure, you'll have to connect the disks directly to the motherboard and launch the program. If you have a number of drives to connect, you may find out that there are less set of ports and power connectors than you need. Uh, this can be fixed with special cords and cables that help you increase the number of ports and connectors. You can see some of those devices on the screen. If you cannot connect all the drives, but you have enough free space, you can copy images of the drives, mount them in the program, and then recover the data from this image. As you can guess, our program supports such operations. All you need to use this method is one free setup port and a hard disk power connector. Connect one of the drives, boot the operating system, and start the program. Open the Tools tab, click Save Disk, specify where to save it, click Save, and remember that we need all of its size, so make sure that the option Full is selected. When the save operation is complete, repeat the procedure for each of the drives that your array consisted of. When all the images are saved, upload them to the program. To mount a disk image, open the Tools tab, select Mount Disk, specify the path to the image file, select it and click Open. The disk will appear in the program. This way, you can have all disks mounted. However, in the case with mounted disks, the program may fail to build the damaged array automatically. So then you'll just have to use the RAID constructor. Start the RAID constructor, click Next, select Manual mode, and click Next again. Now you have to specify all the information about this RAID system. Select its type, specify the block order and size, and give the number of drive groups if your RAID consisted of more than one group. Then add the drives and specify the order while replacing damaged drives with empty drives. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add, and the array will appear in the Drive Manager. As you can see, after the properties were given, the program can recognize the RAID system, its capacity and other information. Now the final step is to scan it and recover your data. Right-click on the array, select Open, and start with a fast scan. If the program failed to find the necessary files, run full analysis instead. Now the program has found all the data still remaining on this RAID. All you have to do is to select the files to be restored and click Recovery. Choose the directory where to save the files, click Next, and recover again. 
When the entire process is over, you will find the recovered files in the folder you have chosen. The program can display the data even if several disks are missing. This is RAID 60, so the files will remain intact even if two disks in each group are down. Usually, RAID 60 servers are extremely reliable and offer convenient backup options. However, just as with any RAID configuration, you can't totally exclude the chances of data loss. A hardware failure, a controller error, software glitches, and so on, all of them may result in losing important information. But if you choose the right utility for recovery, you'll be able to restore the lost data quickly and safely to save your time for searching and recovering the files. And that is all for now. Hopefully, this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!